Hi guys, it's Cherie here and welcome back to another surgical tech video. If you're new here, I'm Cherie and I'm a surgical tech. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to become a surgical tech. I'm giving you guys the 2025 blueprint on how to become a surgical tech. So if you want to know how to research for schools, how to make sure you're choosing the right school, how to make sure your school is accredited, what exam to take, I'm going to be giving you all these answers in this video. So if you're interested in becoming a surgical tech, then keep on watching. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Don't forget to follow me on my socials at Life with Cherie for everyday updates about how to be a surgical tech and life as a surgical technologist. So if you're interested in becoming a surgical tech, but you're not exactly sure what surgical techs do, here's a little rundown of what surgical techs do, who we are what role we play in the operating room. So surgical techs work in the operating room. We work alongside surgery. A lot of times people are confused whether or not we stay in surgery or not. And the answer is yes. We are in surgery from the beginning to the end. We're probably first person in the room and the last person to leave the room. So we get all the equipment, supplies, and instrumentation ready for surgery we open and establish what is called our sterile field that is having a table ready uh, which we call a back table then we have a mayo stand some people use a basin but this is all sterile when we open everything sterile that's going to be used on the patient we open those and we protect that field so one of the big things about being a surgical tech is sterility we're very like we're like the sterility police if you want to call us that <laughs> so we're always watching out for things and making sure everything is sterile so that our patient does not get any infections and we're making sure things run smooth and so once the patient comes in the room and the surgeon comes in the team comes in we gown and glove the surgeon so we wear special protective equipment and we um, protective clothing <laughs> and we um, help the surgeon to also wear that protective um, gown and glove and all that good stuff so we gown and glove them and then we get everything to the field we drape the patient and then we start the procedure starts the surgeon does the procedure and we are helping out as the surgeon goes along so if you work at a hospital and the surgeon has like residents and stuff then you're there you're passing instruments you're getting medications ready you're counting the supplies with your nurse you're making sure that everything that's countable is accounted for and nothing is retained in the patient that's very 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 important um, you're keeping track of your instrumentation you're keeping track of what the procedure is what the surgeon is doing so that you can intake anticipate the surgeon's move so that you can hand write instruments you can know which um, suture he's going to use and what is it that he's going to need and anticipate the surgeon's needs so that the surgery runs smooth so that's a quick rundown of surgical tech very interesting i love being a surgical tech i've been a surgical tech for about four years now love it um don't have any major regrets about it really glad i chose this field it's super interesting you get to see all sorts of stuff different specialties and i love it so if you're interested in being a surgical tech what is the first step that you're going to take so the first step you're going to do is you're going to find a school duh <laughs> so you're going to go on google and you're going to type in surgical tech schools in my area and i don't listen if any online school pop up I want you to pretend you're blind. You didn't see that. We're not doing any of that. None of that online school BS. Your school needs to be either a 10 month program of in classroom learning, lab portion, and then they send you off to clinicals. Or these days, most 10 month certificate programs are now transitioning into associate's degree programs. And so that's obviously a two year degree. And so um, you wanna find a program like that, make sure you're, you have classroom hours, make sure you have lab hours, and make sure they send you off to clinicals to get your experience, right? But it's very important that you do not choose an online program. This is a very hands-on career, and the moment you start this program, you want to be hands-on, you wanna be in lab, learning and seeing instructors demonstrate how to do certain things and so you have to be in person to do this i can't stress that enough you have to be in person it's not safe for you to be out there helping people when you just did not learn anything hands-on it's not safe so you do that you find a school 
you do your little google thing you find a school and so you're going to go ahead and you're going to make sure that school is accredited so the school shall tell you online but people lie um which which is something that has happened a lot of these schools they lie and say they're accredited but accreditation is important simply because when your school is accredited that means you get to sit for your examination and a lot of places want to hire you if you sat through you went through an accredited program it just means that the school meets standards high standards right so accreditation you want to make sure that they're acknowledged and recognized by like big like um important people right so in the surgical tech world we have something called the national board of surgical techs and surgical assistants and that is our big board where that's where most our certification comes through so you want to make sure your school is going to offer that examination at the end of your program there's other um, boards there's the ncct which is the national certification um certifying board or something like that i personally Personally speaking, if you're going to do this in 2025, there's a lot of programs out there that are under the NBS DSA, and I would recommend going through the National Board of Surgical Techs. That's just it. That's just my honest opinion. If you're going to do it, do it right. And I think the standards are better, period. You know what I mean? I think that if you're going to do something as important as becoming a surgical tech you have a very important role to play in the operating room you have a very important role to play in patients lives and so i want you to do it right and so personally speaking i would go through the national board of certifying of surgical techs and surgical assistants so that's the nbsdsa put it right there so and then you want to go to um khep now khep which is the <laughs> please hold <laughs> this one is a, is a long one and i want you guys to get this right because i always mess up these damn um acronyms okay so khep khep is the commission on accreditation of allied health education programs now khep is the leader in the accreditation of health sciences right so that's where you're going to go on that website so c-a-a-h-e-p dot org i believe it is yes dot org and you're gonna look you there's a little place that you can go to start to search for schools and that's a great place to go to make sure your school is accredited oh, okay that's a great place to go to make sure your school is going to be accredited and usually khep is in conjunction with nbstsa you got it so you go on there there's a little search bar that you can use to type in your school and see if that school is accredited again there's other boards and if you must that's fine it would be ncct i don't really i think abes is another one this is another certifying board that you can go through as well um like i said nbsdsa and k have their gold standard for they're made specifically for surgical techs also if you get your examination through the national board of surgical techs and surgical assistants you become you always see our acronym cst this is actually um specifically for students who have taken the nbsdsa examination so we refer to ourselves as csts because we sat for that specific examination people who sat for the ncct they go by i believe ts dash c something like that i think it's just csd backwards with a little dash but again that's just use your discretion i'm just telling you guys go with the gold standard so you find out your school is accredited that's great if you don't find a school that's accredited you need to still do keep doing your research until you find a school that's accredited so the second thing or third thing okay so your school is accredited everything looks good you reach out to your school there may be some type of um prerequisites that you need to do so for me i had to do about two prerequisites i think it was medical terminology and something else this was a long time ago so um but you want to make sure there's no prerequisites and if there is you go ahead get that sorted out make your application um you most likely can't apply until you 
get gotten your prerequisites and pass those courses and whatever and i know a lot of places they say you have to take the t's i've heard a lot of people say they have to take the t's i'm not sure what every school is asking for so make sure you find out what the prerequisites are before you can apply to the program and you get started on those and then when you're done you pass those prerequisites you can go ahead and apply to your program these programs they don't take a lot of people in um each like cohort so you have to make sure um if they don't accept you this time they may accept you the next time but they don't usually accept a ton of people they're usually very tiny programs so just keep that in mind so yeah so you do that and then you do your prerequisites you're ready to apply to the program make sure it doesn't cost you much i know a lot of places because of the um because a lot of the programs are now changing into are making that change to associate's degree programs they bumped up the cost these and the programs that are left with just being such a certificate programs they bumped up the cost unfortunately so feel around you know it's your decision at the end of the day i don't know your financial situation but make sure you check the finances and make sure you're good to go with that and then the next thing you want to make sure again like i said before to making sure your school offers lab portion so lab portion is super important because like i said this is a very hands-on job and you need to be learning things right away before you go off to clinicals and then making sure they place you at a clinical site you should be in clinical for about four to six months i was in clinical for about six months i think that's the standard but i'm not sure if you're doing the associates program maybe a little bit longer but that's even better um so make sure it all offers those things make sure it offers um your books and things of that nature and knowing who accredits your program is important because that's going to decide which examination you're going to be taking at the end of the program okay so knowing who your school is accredited by is important because they decide which that decides which test you're going to be able to take at the end of your program so if your school is accredited by ncct program then that means you're going to be taking the ncct test but if your school is accredited by a k-hair program then that means you're going to be taking the nbsdsa examination now i don't know what the prep is like for the ncct but i do know what the prep is like for the nbsdsa and all of these are linked with the AST, which is the Association of Surgical Technologists. So you're going to want to sign up with them while you're in your program. And then they're going to send you their study guide and all that good stuff. Study guide comes from, it's all in conjunction with the National Board of Surgical Techs and Surgical Assistants. You guys get the gist. So that's super important to make sure the accreditation of your program is up to standard to what you want. Um, I can't tell you guys what to do at the end of the day. There may not be any programs in your area that are accredited by KHEP, and I understand that. But again, just use your discretion and just make the right choice that's best for you. So I talked about ABES as the other um, accrediting board, and that's the accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools. That is another program. Um, that's another commission that helps out with accrediting programs and so that's another one to think about as well i don't know much about abes either but i hear it's also in the same realm as probably ncct or something like that but i know for the gold standard is khap so i'm going to talk about that a lot a lot a lot so you go through your program everything's going well you go through labs and then it's not time for you to go off to clinical portion i do have a clinical video if you want to check that out but clinicals is very fun it's very interesting um it can either tell you right then and there if you want to actually be a surgical tech that is kind of where people kind of figure out whether or not the job is for them i know a lot of people who went to clinicals and was like yeah this is not for me bye um so prepare for that because it could tell you a lot about yourself and the field if you've never been in the operating room you've never seen surgery then this can be a very like 
eye opener like clinicals can be a big eye opener for you so going out to clinicals it's scary uh, but it's definitely something that you need to do to be able to pass your program and like I said you may find out that it's not for you or you may find that this is the best decision ever and you can't wait to be done and find a job <laughs> um, so that's really it um, those are the main main steps to take to becoming a surgical tech it's very big that you just do as much research as possible sorry guys i'm so tired um i'm always filming these videos like after work and stuff i know the last one of the videos i made um i think it was almost two years ago and people still give me so much flack for this <laughs> so much flack i get for this but i was recording a video pretty late one night really and I was talking about my pros and cons and I was talking about um how many hours I worked that day or whatever and I made a mistake I literally said something else um and people were, were just people cannot let that go like I'm still getting comments to this day I'm gonna click the video here so if you want to check out the pros and cons videos go right here don't don't tell me nothing about me counting wrong I know I counted wrong okay but I'm not gonna delete it crazy um so um sometimes i blabber because i'm just being a content creator and working a full-time job and being in school is so hard so i'm sorry if i blabber a lot sometimes or i'm just all over the place it's just because i'm honestly just so tired and doing this after work so anyways those are the main things so make sure you do your research you make sure your school is accredited so make sure you check out khap make sure you check out ASD and you check out the nbsdsa.org these are all dot org um and i will put them all in the description box for you to go ahead and check out also if you want more information check out the page on instagram or the website um thank you um check out for the love of surgery um i partner with my girl tatiana and miss tracy and we try to give you guys as much information as we can about becoming a surgical tech and answer all your questions and stuff. So follow us there and find us on ForTheLoverSurgery.com for a lot of information and a lot of links to get you the right, to get you the right places and to answer a lot of your questions. Um, also feel free to always message me on my social media. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, this is why I created this page and I started sharing my journey because there's just not a lot of information out there. And now, you know, now there is, but even when I started school, did school five years ago, there really wasn't a ton of us out there for creators who were creating content and giving you guys the down low on being a surgical tech. So that's really, it for this video i hope it was helpful and please comment down below any questions you might have and follow me on instagram and on tiktok and yeah i think that's it let's run it down again so make sure you do your research make sure your school is accredited make sure you know which exam they offer at the end don't don't be afraid to call these people if you find a school and you're not sure you can't find information about it call them um <clears throat> call khap and see if that they have this school um make sure they have they offer lab classes no online classes i do not you will never hear me telling you guys to do an online program that will never come out of my mouth I will never recommend doing an online program. Don't ask me about no online program. I know nothing about it. I do not recommend it. I recommend that you do a 10 month to a year program or a two year program and it needs to have clinicals and labs and it's in person, period, okay? So go be great. And for those of you who are in clinicals i hope you guys are having a fantastic time um again don't forget to message me if you guys want to talk and if you guys are looking for i'm i am thinking about offering mentor mentorship i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it but i'm not sure yet as soon as i figure out because i'm in school right now and i'm just all over the place so but i think i, I might so if i do decide to 
mentor some of you guys i will let you guys know but feel free to reach out to me if you're struggling with anything i will help you i'm glad to answer any questions um so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it helpful i'll see you guys in the next one and also comment down below what else you guys want to see um i know i've slacked off on my content this year it's march and i barely posted anything any long form content so please comment down below tell me what else you guys want to see from me what do you guys want me to talk about and i'll be more than happy to do that so i'll see you guys in the next one bye